If you are interested in learning JavaScript, I would highly recommend this course on Udemy created by me named Modern Full Stack JavaScript Course with about 10 plus projects. Projects are real world projects, so if you're interested, please have a look at the coupon which is listed in the description below of this video. Welcome back everybody, this is Awais back with another video on the channel. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can use action sheet in your application. Now action sheets are great when you have to have some sort of a pop-up which will get the user to type in an option. So this is action sheet. So for example, if you want to delete some component or delete some value, I can say, hey, you want to delete, click on delete. You want to share, you sh click on share, play, model, favorite, and cancel. So we're going to create this model in this video. Uh, but you might be thinking, what am I doing here? There's a lot of things happening here already. So for that, I'm actually going to create a new project. And then in that project, so let me just open a terminal first. And then here in the terminal, let me just make it bigger for you guys. And let's do this. Now in the terminal, I'm going to create a new Ionic 4 project and then we will add action sheets to it. Type and I want to make that to Angular. I'm going to press enter. Now it's going to ask me what will be your project name. So I'll say Ionic Tutorial and then what template do I want to use? So if you are creating your application with the tabs, UI, you can select tabs, which will automatically generate a code for you where you will have some tabs already placed for you to use. We want to work on side menu, then you will use side menu template, which will already have some sort of code, which will generate a side menu for you. But what we want to do here is we want to create a blank template and then using that blank template we want to learn how to implement some components and after that we will learn how we can create a ui including tabs in the side menu so we want both into place so let's uh let's get started with that blank template so we're going to select that and it's going to go and download now it's asking me integrate your new app with cordova to target native ios and android i'll say yeah why not i'll just integrate Cordova to my application. Right, so the project is nearly done. Now basically it's asking me whether I want to integrate my Ionic project to Ionic Pro SDK. Well, I don't have an account as of yet now uh, for Ionic Pro, so that's why I'm gonna say N and press enter. All right, so the project is created. Now I'm gonna open that project in WebStorm. So let's me open WebStorm. And here, let's uh, let's take it to that window there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and click on open. We're gonna navigate to that folder, Ionic Tutorial, and I'm going to open that. Now this is a similar project that we just created in the last video. It's a blank project. It's got nothing more than just a, a boilerplate code to run our application. So we're gonna go inside this, and I'm going to go to terminal. And I'm going to simply type a command ionic sir-l. I'm going to click on this browser so it will go and open that. Uh, so now before we can open this project into a lab, we need to install ionic lab. Let's say UI, press enter, and it's going to install ionic lab now, and then it will open our application. As you can see, after installing Ionic Lab, it automatically opened up. So right now we're looking at iOS version of our application, but we can take a look at Android and also Windows. I'm just going to scroll down. This is Android, guys, and that's Windows down there. So we continue with Android and Windows. So let's take a look at the code. Now in the source folder, as I explained in the last few videos about this blank project. So we're going to go to app and here we have this app a module. The app module is the main module of your application. We have an app routing module, which I've already explained to you guys how the routing and a lazy routing works in Angular 4. So here we have this app routing module. App module, we have an app component. We have an app component.html file where we have this Ionic app with Ion Router Outlet. Basically, Let's take a look at the outer outlet. 
What it does, if you're familiar with Angular, it will tell the application this is where I want to start my routing. So this is the main entry point for your routing. So now what we want to do here, we want to learn how we can create an action sheet. So I'm going to go to App Component, or we can simply go to our home page and do our action sheet because App Component is nothing more than a, just a placeholder for routing. It does not really have anything. So basically when the application starts, it looks at this on router and it goes to the routing module and looks at what it's supposed to load. We go to app routing module and here we can say if there is no path, it will redirect to home. So we want to do all our uh, logic home. So let's go to home page and here if I'm just going to go and remove all this and I'll say, hey, I want to have ion button. Okay. And then inside this, I'll say hello action sheet we press command s it will save the project and we'll open that into our app so here we can see we have this hello action sheet button which does not do anything as of now so what we want to do we want to create an action sheet but i'm going to take you to an uh a, a documentation for this so you can go and continue learning after you learn how to implement these kind of ui components so here we have an action sheet slide up from the bottom edge of the device and display the set of options with ability to confirm or action or, or cancel action. So action sheet can sometimes be used as an alternative to menus, however, they should not be used for navigation. So we go to API and in API, it will give us some sort of uh, code snippet which we can use. So now I'm going to go back to the code and here we'll just open home ts file where we want to do our logic and then here i'm going to create a constructor function constructor i'll say public and i'll say action all right guys so i fast forwarded the the function so basically let me go and explain the function what we have done so far so in the constructor we added this uh, action sheet controller service and i stored that service into the variable name called action sheet and then we created a function which is an async function and i named it present action sheet and then inside that function we created a const variable which basically have this async and await uh, now we are using this action sheet which I injected into this constructor function and then we call the method dot create and then we got some few properties to define uh, so we could show the action sheet. So we have a header. What would be the header of the action sheet? What is the mode of our action sheet? Any buttons available in action sheet so we can define as many buttons as we want and then after that we have this await action sheet dot present method which will basically create an action sheet and then make it appear right so now we have this function i'm going to put this function and call it when i click on this button so we go to the home dot uh home page dot html and here i'll use a click and then i'll just call it present action sheet i'll save the project and now our compiling should be done in like five seconds. Yes, it's done. I'm going to click on Hello Action Sheet. And there we go. So we have an action sheet. So I can click on it and then it will just disappear. So now if I go to, let's just say, homepage.ts. And here I have had a handler on the button. Basically, it's a function that will be called once you click that button. So let me go to the console here in the browser and I want to show you that when I click on the button, we'll see you click me on the console. So I click on that and then I'll just go down and I click on that cancel button and there you go. We see you click me. So you can see that we can call any functions from anywhere in our application on this button. So this is very useful if you want to perform any action. And also, just to mention that you can add multiple buttons here. 
So for example, this is one button in an array we have. Uh, I'm just gonna move this array down so it's better and cleaner to look at. So here I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna add a comma here. I'm gonna add another button and I'll just say role would be, let's just say this destructive. All right, and then the text would be hello icon. We can say add. I'm gonna save the file and I'm gonna here say you added me. Okay, I'm gonna save the file again and let's take a look at do we get two buttons now? So if I click on this button to close the console, I click on this and we get this button hello and a cancel. So here we define a role that has this cancel so it will go down but if we have another button we define a role to destructive that means it will go into the list so we can have like a multiple buttons here with a destructive role so i'll just go make another one comma make another one and i save the project and this time when i click on that hello action sheet you'll see multiple buttons appearing so i'll click on this and here we have multiple buttons i'm going to go to console and just clear this thing out. Now we're gonna to go to action sheet. I'm gonna click on one of the buttons. It says you added me. If I click on that, I click on cancel button. You see that you clicked me. So you can perform any kind of action onto one of these buttons. All right, so this was a quick introduction to how you can use the components using their, uh, their classes. So yeah, next video we'll look at some more components in Ionic 4.